Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, welcome to the boat gang. So we got the Swifter XL build here. I hadn't had a video out on this boat in a few days. I hadn't really been working on it. I've been running some boats. Uh, today we're actually going to be epoxying our through hole in for the steering. We're going to make a backer plate. We're also going to epoxy the motor mount in and get our stuffing tube bent and epoxied into the boat so when we take the boat to paint shop uh, we'll have a, a nice paint job all the all the through holes will be painted over and it, it, it'll look nice you know so uh, stick around big B we're down clay RC all right so I actually am using an 8.3 millimeter brass tube for my through hole the bellows going to be mounted inside like you see I got the hole drilled for my 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 stuffing tube Okay, I actually got my stuffing tube bent. I've had it on the setup block and uh, it, it's close. So we're about to epoxy that in. So I got my new P-Limited motor in. Looks pretty, pretty badass in the boat. <laughs> it's gonna go good with my orange cooling line and stuff. So um, I got the coupler on and I cut my flex cable sh sh to length, but it's, I left it a little bit long for, for, uh, for, for, for air. You know, we'll cut it to size later on once we permanently get the stuffing tube installed i just wanted to be able to put my my flex cable in and kind of get everything lined up so we can epoxy all this in uh right now um i actually have my my stuffing tube bent but it's not where i want it okay i actually have my my height right on my on my my tunnel okay um typically like you want like a level tunnel right you want a level tunnel Okay, so basically, I mean, this isn't exactly how you do it, but I'm just showing you. You want your tunnel of your boat to be about level. You know, if anything, you actually want it about half a degree higher in the back, you know. So, we need to get that stuffing tube bent so we can get a level, a level strut. So I'm just basically going to get it bent to shape. Look like I need a little bit more bend about right in here. I didn't want to put a hard bend in mine. No, I left it like a nice gradual bend, you know. I'll try that. I got my, my Speedmaster bushing in. All right, got my Teflon in there. I'll cut it to size as well later on. All right, All right. so I got my motor where I want it. Okay, um, got my little gap here. Just bent that stuffing tube and it's, I don't think we're gonna have to do much back and forth cause it's perfectly flat you guys see that it's perfectly flat on the setup board my tunnel it's basically level it's actually 0.20 on the high side like the back of the boat running a little bit high so once this strut you know settles in then it'll basically be new uh, level. You guys see that? That actually looks pretty damn good. I like that bend. No hard bend, just a nice gradual bend. Running that .150 with the with the liner there. My stuffing tube it looks straight with the strut. Okay, um, my strut is vertical. I, I definitely need to put the two bottom screws in, but uh, I, I got nuts on there, so, so it's it's tight up against this, this transom. So I'm gonna mix up some 15 minute uh, medium cure epoxy from Bob Smith Industries and we're actually going to uh, just tack this into place. I've got this through hole hole cut perfect. It's like actually tight fitting. There's no gap forward or aft. It's like a perfect freaking hole through the hole. Stuff a tube through hole epoxied in. I use some of this parts mounting tape to reinforce the through hole so when we go to bend or maneuver, you know, tune our boat, uh, the through hole will have a solid base. 
And uh, when we go moving it around, we won't crack anything because the hull on this boat is super freaking thin. Now, I've actually been contemplating the past couple of days. Um, I cut this out. It would actually go about right here. It would be a piece of fiberglass, okay, a piece of fiberglass woven cloth. And it would go under my batteries, the ESC, and the motor. That's it to keep weight down you know um like i said one of my viewers asked me if I sh they should inlay the inside of this boat i told them anything over 60 mile an hour or over 6s or running 6s yeah it probably needs to be reinforced we're running 4s somewhat light setup in the mid 60s so um I i'm kind of thinking it doesn't need to be reinforced for our application but I'm also thinking about longevity. You know, if we were to add an extra few ounces here, I don't think it would hurt anything and it may actually help the boat last longer. Uh, and it would, the, the fiberglass cloth, it's a little heavier than carbon fiber. I do have carbon fiber cloth to put in here, but it would look out of place, right? So if we put our fiberglass wove cloth in there, cut like, like you guys seen that, that template, it might not look that bad. You know all right so it's been about an hour since i laid this out and it's pretty much cured out so the stuffing tube is not going to move around so i went ahead and mixed up some 15 minute here um, not a whole lot i just got a little bit because i'm just going to basically glue the bottom of this mount right now i want to be able to tomorrow i want to be able to pull the motor off with the mount tacked in place you know so I just got a little bit mixed up. I've already roughed up the side of my mount. I've got it cleaned up with alcohol. Got the hole cleaned with alcohol. And I'm just going to, just basically going to tack it in place. And then tomorrow we'll finish up the motor install. Okay. Put some epoxy on the bottom of my rails. It's a little bit of epoxy on the hole once I get my imprint there. And. Just a light tack, and then tomorrow we'll go in and reinforce it. So we, you know, we could take the motor off, off the mount, and actually get to the inside and the outside there. Okay, so basically go and put it on my my, my, my flex cable and set it in the hole. Got that epoxy on there, and now I got an imprint where my mount's going to be. Can you guys see that? So I'm just gonna get me a brush here, a little small brush, and just kind of rub this into the hole so it so it's you know gets in and grabs. Okay. Boom. Boom. Like so. Got me a perfect gap. I got the the motor angle right and it should it should be on the money okay and we'll clean it all up take the motor off tomorrow reinforce that servo mount in I got my motor mount in reinforced stuff and tubes reinforced the bottom looks really good nice and clean okay and um, I got my through hole through hole tube in. I don't know if you guys can see it. So I actually made me a template for the inside of my transom and I installed my through hole first so whenever I put my, my chopped mat in the transom for reinforcement it will reinforce that through hole tube. That 8.3 millimeter tube. So um, I'm going to go ahead and lay this out. Yeah, It's pretty simple pretty simple right so I got my mat laid down now I'm just gonna flatten it out I'm gonna use the rest of my epoxy to um to epoxy in my backer plate since I have the boat stood up it'd be a perfect time to do that got that chopped strand mat laid down okay actually turned out pretty good I also have my turn fin uh, backer plate nut plate epoxied in I put a little bit of chopped up fiberglass in the resin whenever I put that in I put some oil on my on my screws I drove my screws in okay 
and hopefully, hopefully, I don't have any issue getting those those screws out the back of plate because I I used some oil here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, getting there, getting there. About to uh, we're gonna put the boot on, get the servo mount installed, and I'll let so you. So it's actually get it. like a few days later. Okay, like like I said, I'm taking my time with this build. Okay, got my through hole epoxied in. We got the transom reinforced with chop strand fiberglass epoxy. Okay, so that's ironclad. All right. Um, the servo is installed. Okay, I just epoxied it right onto the deck. Boom. Okay, and like I mentioned in a previous video, the nice thing about this servo mount right here is the fact, like if you get the the setup wrong or you need like your servo moved out or in uh the way this clamps down in the mount you can actually move your servo in and out you, you know what i'm saying like you can move it in and out tighten it down and, and you're good to go so i got my my servo arm on i need to trim it to size i'm not sure if i want to run the arm here or flip the servo over run it forward i kind of just want to check this um the servo you know make sure everything moves right before i disassemble sand and paint okay just real quick the end of the video just kind of finalize it on a positive note i hope <laughs> um so let's get this thing powered on where's the power button this is a 90 that came into blackjack v2 damn listen to how loud that motor is Wow, I've never heard a motor that loud. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, so let's pull up the motor real quick. Okay, okay. No grease in the cable. All right, that sounds good. Do some uh, servo. First time hooking it up. I did, I did just check for center. But I have not actually like moved it around, so okay. So I actually need to bend my rod out or move my servo out just a hair. It looks like not much. That's about all the throw will need. If I need more than that, it's going to actually bind up the the rod so that's about all the throw you'll use on a hydroplane see how i got it pulling pulling for a right turn by the way i didn't mention this earlier um this transom actually has an angle on it okay let's see yeah it's out like this angle like this so i, I made a shim you guys see that shim under my my rudder bracket here okay I, I made it to where my my blade to where this blade is basically perfectly vertical perfectly vertical right uh because it has that angle on the back so i had to shim up the bottom to bring my rudder blade vertical okay looks good got to trim the, the, the flex cable up of course I got it cut long for error. We are human. Right? I tell you what, that motor sounds good on with a 90 MPSC. I mean, it sounds good. That's for us. I think it's gonna be a fast little boat. I really do. I really do. So, uh, all we gotta do now is install the the ESC. I'm going to use Velcro for my batteries with jam foam under so I can run single and double. Okay. So yeah, yeah, she's coming along. She's coming along, man. I got the, um, the backer plate, nut plate on, epoxy in. It's ready to go. We're going to wet sand this bad boy and start painting. Spirit of the Navy. Let's go. Appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you next time.